Been a long day, I just wanna lay down and sleep on my bed, but you stuck in my head, I don't know why. Hey everybody and welcome to my channel. My name is Alicia and uh, welcome. I'm gonna jump right in. I wanted to film a quick video, a little bit as an introduction to some other random topics about money. So as you can see, the title of this video is called Why I Have Four Side Hustles. And um, it's gonna be a little bit of a touchy subject because you know some people uh, don't like talking about money, some people I know hands down are not acknowledging that there is a recession or something else going on <laughs> in the United States that basically derived all from the pandemic. I have a fear about money and I don't live in anxiety every day, but I've had a lot of things happen since the pandemic that really has shaken the crap out of me to realize once and for all, because I already knew this, but I wasn't really taking action. I was still in the security of a full-time job. And that fear is, you know, being a broke single mom. For those of you that are married, you do have to consider a tiny, tiny, tiny little part that there's a possibility that you may never have that person in your life anymore for whatever reason. You may not have that other source of income. And if you are a woman who either wants children or a woman who has children, you need to really basically position, your, position yourself in a place where you are always going to make money somehow, some way. Now, my video is not going to be all about the official how to start a side hustle. I just kind of want to go into why I have one and or a few at this point. <laughs> but I started off with one and it grew into a few. My fears about money stem from really they stem from childhood. My dad and my mom were married for 20 years. They got divorced. And because my mom was from another, basically a, a semi third world country, my mom is from Ethiopia. So I'm a quarter Ethiopian, hence the curly hair today. <laughs> I just, I don't always want to straighten my hair. I like to let it breathe, but um, I'm, I'm, I also had a really bad haircut. So this is the only way to kind of disguise that. So yes, no straight hair today. Um, but yeah, I'm a quarter Ethiopian. So that'll make for a whole nother video. Mom is from Ethiopia. She was brought here by my dad who was in the Air Force. And of course, when you're in the military, you can pretty much immediately bring someone over that you're engaged to. My mom was never able to have an education at all. I mean, her reading and writing skills are of that, you know, someone probably in middle school still, although verbally she speaks like six different languages. <laughs> my mom is smart, very smart in that aspect. But as far as, you know, she still has a very, very strong accent. And, you know, I've tried to help her start a business, but I just don't think she can really wrap her head around either even just maintaining a simple business um, because she's just more of a creator. That's probably where I get my, my artsy skills from. I was a graphic design major. Um, I did very well in middle school and high school in regards to art and creating art. And then I went to graphic design school for a little bit until I couldn't afford it. She was married to my dad for 20 years. My dad worked for NASA, you know, and then all the other aeronautic companies that kind of work around NASA, like Rockwell, McDonnell Douglas. So my dad was super duper smart. He went to the air force. He got three degrees in science, physics, and mathematics, graduated cum laude. So my dad pretty much milked the military for an education. My mom, complete opposite, right? And of course, when they divorced, that left my mom in a position where my, at the time, I mean, remember I'm 44. So when my parents got divorced, I was pretty much 13. Child custody battle didn't even finalize until I was 16 years old <laughs> um, because there was marriage involved and things just took a lot longer back then. But also my mom was fighting a lot against my dad. And of course it's just, negative animosity that I would never want anyone to go through. Make a long story short, my mom did not have the kind of education to really go out and get even a basic administrative job. 
she was kind of left in a position where I don't think she was getting any alimony, but she was using my child support as alimony. If you can wrap your head around this, I'm 44 now, like I just said. I was 13 when my parents got divorced for all those years until I was 18. My child support was $900 a month. Just wrap your head around what $900 was like 30 years ago um, or almost 30 years ago. That's how much my child support was. That was enough for my mom to actually rent um, a one bedroom condo and pay for food and everything on the table. And, you know, I was a cheerleader in, in, in high school when I was with her. So it's like to pay for all the little cheerleading things, which are very expensive. But my mom never tried to go out and get an education. I think she just, you know, went from one country to another. And, you know, there was really nobody that probably really taught her. Although she had friends that were actually starting businesses, they were doing it typically with their husbands. Anyways. So I grew up with my mom, who's pretty much been poor. She's still to this day on, you know, public assistance. When I had my child, I instantly, that just lit a fire under me because I, I, what, I left his dad shortly after giving birth for, you know, very important reasons. And I really didn't think I would be as single. I would, as single. I really didn't think I would be single still at the age of 44. Had my child at 38, I turned 39 three weeks later, I have still been single. Sometimes by choice and mostly not by choice, meaning I have tried everything. I've tried to do the online dating, get to know people, take my time, or also capitalize on, you know, when someone's interested. It just hasn't happened for me. I have, you know, reached a point where I've just kind of, um, it's not given up, but I've definitely said, you know what, I'm just not gonna focus on dating. I'm gonna put my eggs into the basket of building me a business, a side hustle, because here's the thing. If a husband never comes along, how am I gonna buy a house for me and my child? Especially that I live in Austin, Texas, that is now officially, since the pandemic, the most expensive city to live in. But I've been here for 20 years, this is my home. So here I am now trying to keep up with the cost of living, with rent going up, my car insurance is now up to $170 a month, and my bank says that's the cheapest. I've had no accidents, no tickets. I'm 44. My SUV has every safety bell and whistle you can imagine. And it is just getting so ridiculously expensive. I wanna preface by saying, I have had very positive experiences with the money and I've had negative experiences with money. I guess you could say three times now, I have gone through the phase of paying off massive debt. Y'all, I had nine credit cards by the time I was 21. That will make for another video of why I felt the need to go out and get so much credit. And again, that will be in another video. If you're interested in hearing about that, please subscribe to my channel because although I don't want to be a money or finance channel, I really wanna get into that topic as one of the lifestyle topics on my channel. So one of the pillar topics. So if you're interested in hearing more about side hustles, money, basically preparing yourself to not be dependent on someone mentally and financially, then please subscribe. I've had negative, I've had negative experiences with money. I've had positive experiences with money. Now here's one of the sad truths. I never had a savings, like a real savings, until the pandemic happened. Because I getting the extra 600 a week, not having, you know, $1,200 a month in childcare, and then all of my bills, except for two credit cards that would not work with me, that will make for another video rant of why eventually I wanna get rid of all of my credit cards, except for the one with my bank, my credit union. That will make for another video. I never had a savings until the pandemic happened because I saved, I saved, I saved everything. I, even though I had the money to pay it because I was getting paid literally the same, if not probably more than my actual full-time job that I had gotten laid off from at the time, I saved up almost $9,000 from sitting around 
<laughs> now my mind was not, at the time, my mind was not thinking about hopping on YouTube channel and producing more videos or going out and getting a bunch of stuff and starting a business like everybody else did. But had I done that, I would probably be in a place right now where I would be buying some $500,000 house because I make, you know, $40,000 a month from handmade skincare, like a lot of other people that I follow. By the way, truly inspirational. If you uh, go on YouTube and you search for videos that have to do with like launch day or handmade skincare business, a lot of people are also doing this with digital Etsy shops, digital download shops on Etsy where they're making six figures. Just use some keywords to find those topics. And let me just tell you, the moment you get on YouTube and you find these videos, you are going to realize that if you've been contemplating on starting a side hustle, thinking that you're not going to make a lot of money, that <clears throat> you're not going to be successful. Y'all, there is so much motivation out there. Real normal people like me and you that are starting these side hustles and it is just taking off. Now, yes, the pandemic played a huge part into the ma massive growth, but for a lot of those people, it was, I, I, from a lot of videos that I watched, it was either people who started a side hustle before the pandemic, or they started a side hustle during the pandemic. Preparation met opportunity. And here's my theory. Since we all know what the US government can do to the United States, the next time there is a pandemic, this is the part where my brain is already thinking, I need to be more prepared now for maybe the next big, op big opportunity. Let me also give you a little bit of back history. I have always had the entrepreneurial spirit in me, okay? Um, I have been in real estate. I've been a realtor three times. I've had another independent position where, you know, I got paid like 50 grand a year with a company credit card. I could make my own schedule. And as long as I did my presentations and, you know, logged in everything and whatnot, I was basically an account executive for um, this big nationwide house housing company. So the only thing is I was working till sometimes midnight just to document and, and input my data every day with uh, my son who is barely one years old. And I had to quit that job, y'all. It was just, it was brutal. Like, in my honest opinion, you could pay me all the money in the world. But if you're gonna have me up till midnight when I'm a single mom and I have to do all the other things, of preparing my home, preparing things for my child and taking care of myself, no thank you. So I quit that job within four months. It was sad, but I genuinely threw in the towel. I was like, this is not the kind of life that I want. This would be best probably for someone without a child. So with that being said, you know, I have had the entrepreneurial spirit. Um, I've been trying some side hustles or the very beginning of side hustles. And I will admit a lot of times I have quit way too early in the game. I also get shiny object syndrome. You could say that, you know, I'm just not dedicated or, you know, all the negative comments, like you just don't really want it. You're just not dedicated. But the way I look at it is all that prep work that I did actually was helping me figure out what I wanted and what I needed in my life to actually be able to stick with something for a, a long time. With being a realtor, I started learning about real estate investing. And pretty much during most of my pregnancy, I was a realtor slash investor. I was doing all the work as an investor. I hired someone to handwrite my letters. I had my LLC formed. I had my down payment money in the bank. I had my team. I, you know, I, uh, I uh, interviewed contractors to figure out which one I wanted to go with. I had my title company. I had my private money lender and my hard, my hard money lender that was a company and my private money lender that was a person. I had all of that down. I formed my team as I was learning started off learning through YouTube until I actually started taking real action of going to investor meetings. And that led to meeting people, meeting people, 
you know, doing work for a wholesaler for free to learn in return and networking a lot. Okay. During my pregnancy, I walked into all sorts of houses between Austin and San Antonio. I, 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 I would just ran, you know, cause I had a realtor key. I would walk in, I would look at properties that were just gorgeous and look at the price and I would assess them. And then I would walk into practically uninhabitable houses that needed a complete renovation to even be habitable again by the city. So I did all the work. I even put in a couple contracts. I met with owners to see if I can buy their house for cash. I was getting so close to everything. And then I had to deliver a baby. <laughs> Having a child obviously changes your life. So long story short, I didn't think that I would be leaving his dad pretty quickly after giving birth, but that happened unfortunately. And I kind of gave up on that investing dream for quite some time. And I still have that dream. I still want to buy real estate, own properties. And I definitely still believe that real estate is the number one way and even probably the fastest to making a lot of money, but it's a lot of work. And if you don't have the time and the energy to do a lot of work to quickly make that happen, and I would say this is with real estate or even a side hustle, um, at some point it's just going to drag on and on and on and you're going to kind of give up. So with having a child, I realized I really couldn't get out and about as much. So I kind of gave up on being a realtor anymore. I didn't want to be at the mercy of other people, right? Show me this house at eight o'clock. Show me this house at seven o'clock in the morning. And you know how it is in real estate. If you're not available and ready to take someone to see a house, they're going to go find another realtor who will. So I gave up on that. I guess you could say being a realtor investor dream, or at least I threw it way way, way, way back in the back of my mind because I was a new mom. I wanted to find something else that was going to be more at home. So the first thing I dabbled in after my son gave, after I gave birth to my son was selling on Amazon. I will do another full video about my whole Amazon journey because I'm now on Amazon again with one of my brands, one of my side hustles. They're both in different capacities, but for this short story, I dabbled into Amazon selling in 2017, went into, you know, maybe thinking I could do videos about starting a YouTube channel, doing social media. And with that one, I quickly realized, man, these social media apps and YouTube is constantly changing. And although that might be positive because you would have an insane amount of content to talk about, it was just too many changes so fast each year, every few months that I just didn't want, it, it was just too much for me personally to have to keep up with like all the changes of the algorithms and stuff. So kind of gave up on that one. I did start a YouTube channel in 2019. It was during another time when I was unemployed because I went from that $50,000 a year job. I started another job which was full time. But within a week, I told my staffing company, get me out of this job. The owner was making sexually type, sexual type comments around me, not necessarily to me or about my body, but just hearing a, ther a therapist, y'all, a therapist with his own practice, saying these things around me within a week of me working there, I told my staffing company, pull me out of this job. This is not going to be a safe environment for me to work on if this person has said this thing and that thing already. I went through a period where I said, screw it. Just really genuinely hold out for that perfect job. With that being said, I did start the YouTube channel in 2019. Till this day, I tell myself, oh, I wish I would have just continued. So for those of you watching this, wanting to start that YouTube channel, just start. And y'all, I'm just going to give you this quick little side note. If you get started and you are just so busy in your life, you've got kid or multiple kids or just a lot of engagements. It's all about consistency. If you can only do one video a month, if that's all you can really commit to, commit to that one video a month, but keep, make it consistent. So, Videos I started in 2019 didn't really get any traction. It's when I posted more in 2020 that 
till this day, y'all, two of my biggest videos are two videos that I did in 2020 are over 12,000 and 15,000 views. Now that may not seem like a lot. It's not hundreds of thousands or millions, but it's a lot for someone that only has what 600 and something subscribers right now. So, and just to know that there's, I'm getting exposure and just to see the power of YouTube, this is why you need to be consistent because had I also continued since 2020 or late 2020, when I went through another period of unemployment, because if you didn't see one of my other previous videos, I have been laid off three times since the pandemic. Hence this video and why I have this fear about money, but the fear drives me into a state or a lot of states of motivation and inspiration and creativity. So it's really pushing me even more to do more and have more. Um, with that being said, had I been consistent with even those videos in 2020, I would probably have quit my job, honestly, by now. There are a lot of people that grew so fast just from pandemic stuff still happening in 2020. So when I started my first side hustle, the one that I started a year and a half, over a year and a half ago that I've stuck with the longest, it was actually a little bit by accident. I have a tattoo aftercare brand. I want it to be more skincare products, but for now I'm capitalizing on the tattoo aftercare balm. This is the product right now that I have on Amazon or the products that I have on Amazon. So that one I started by accident because I was actually looking for a tattoo balm for myself. I was like, you know what? I have all this expensive work. This is, this is expensive so far and this arm's not even done. But I was like, you know what? I do need to start taking care of the skin. If anything, the skin around my tattoos, just as much as we should be taking care of the skin on our face. So I started looking for stuff just on Etsy and Amazon. And I felt like everything was geared towards men. It was manly images, manly tattoo images, very masculine names like tattoo goo. That is just not something as a female <laughs> I would want to buy, right? It's like, um, <laughs> I, I just wouldn't want to buy it. And I was like, why is there not a female founded, like female directed, female focused tattoo aftercare brand that literally says this is for women. My other thought was, why didn't Kat Von D do this? So after doing tons of research, which I didn't really have to do a lot of research, if you're not on Amazon and you're not on Etsy, in my opinion, you, you just don't exist. <laughs> I, I mean, or unless you're going viral on TikTok, that could be, you know, another thing. But um, yeah, so I was looking for a tattoo balm for myself and I ordered a particular product that I had actually seen on Shark Tank. And I ordered the product and I was very dissatisfied by the smell. Well, it turns out there was a lot of bad reviews about the smell of this product. And it did have essential oils in it, but the theory was one of the essential oils probably went rancid. But with that being said, I quickly realized also, I was just tired of lavender. Like everybody does lavender, 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 lavender. I wanted to do something different. Someone that, something that genuinely smelled good, but I created my own tattoo balm. I basically created this tattoo balm, uh, started with a basic recipe, spent weeks reformulating, reformulating, reformulating because I was looking for a very particular feel and consistency of my product. So I'm, I'm type A in that aspect, but also I wanted it to be a success. I felt like I'm cr like from the very beginning, I wanted to create a brand, a skincare brand, an indie skincare brand, so to speak, kind of like mad hippie in a perfect world. I would want to get my product into Sephora. Sephora does discover smaller brands that are out there um, and they do a lot more than makeup. Now, I created a product, threw it up on Etsy and within a, week and, had, within a week and a half I had my first sale and then I had at least one sale a week after. And then I got really busy in my full-time job 
And literally, I didn't look at my statistics. I wasn't looking at uh, my reviews even. I didn't, I don't even think I knew where to look for my reviews until about six months in, because I was just fulfilling orders at that point. Six months in, I just started looking at my reviews and I was like, oh my goodness, I have nothing but five-star reviews. So I really started reading people's feedback and then I was like, okay, I have something here. <laughs> it's either the branding or it's the product or it's both. Even though I haven't even had 100 sales as of today on Etsy, y'all, I decided to go ahead and take my product to Amazon. The reason why I probably don't have 100 sales is because I just don't have the kind of product that I can create 100 listings off of. For some of y'all that know how Etsy works, the more listings you have, the better the organic algorithm is gonna show your listing. Well, I've got like five tattoo balm products. I've got maybe two lip balms and a lip scrub. I, you know, I could create multiple listings, but I just can't literally create 100 skincare products. So I realized very quickly, Etsy is not gonna be the place that I grow. The place that you can really grow when you have one or two products and you could just blow up is gonna be Amazon because of the magnitude of Amazon having like 318 million buyers worldwide compared with Etsy's 43 million buyers worldwide. So it didn't take me long. And that's because even with such a small amount of sales, half of the review, the, the amount of reviews that I have is about half of my sales. They all have five star reviews. I think one person gave me a four star. And the feedback that I got from multiple people, obviously not being the same person, was a lot of the same similar feedback. So I knew I had something and I just needed to get it on the right platform or do a heck of a lot of marketing. I am just one person though. I can't do all that marketing. So to make a long story short, here I am full circle on Amazon again. That might be another video that I will talk about that. I have been working on that brand for a year and a half now. Okay. I had a full-time job up until recently. If in case you haven't seen that video, I got laid off. It's my third time being laid off since the pandemic. Even before I lost my job, my brain was already churning going, okay, Alicia, while you're slowly building bad girl bomb at the time I was waiting for, I was going through the approval process of Amazon had a lot of spare time, didn't want to sit on the couch. I have a child, but it's just one and he's five. So he's pretty simple. Bring him home from daycare. He gets fed, whatever. He's watching his cartoons. I'm asking him about school and the next thing you know, it's bedtime. So it was pretty easy to say that I was going to start something else. Now it was also slowing down in my job tremendously instead of sitting at home, getting paid hourly with my job. I was also telling myself capitalize on this spare time, capitalize on the fact that you're getting paid a nice hourly pay to do nothing. Feel that this is the time in my life where that preparation met the opportunity. And that is why I am finally here to say I can now be a little bit more consistent on YouTube. I decided to go ahead and create more side hustles, meaning more Etsy shops, because Etsy is really the lowest hanging fruit as far as what you need to start a side hustle or even a full fledged business. Etsy, there is no approval process. It's 20 cents per listing. You can build up your shop over time without having to actually go get a website, spend an enormous amount of time on social media, by the way, rule of thumb, in case you're thinking about starting a side hustle, this is what I keep hearing from other people who have either Etsy shops or Amazon stores, or even they're just driving traffic to their own website. And this is very true in sales in general. You have to market your business 80% of the time. To a lot of us, social media is overwhelming. And even more so, if people are telling you that video is pretty much the only way you're gonna get seen, that is even more work. If YouTube was the only thing that I was doing, I could easily crank out still only about two to three videos a week. And that's because I just cannot cram myself into the whole editing and uploading and preparation and tagging process in one day. 
I want to say this. I actually started a side hustle last year and I spent three weeks working on it. And then something was just like, Alicia, why are you starting another side hustle when you should be focusing on one? Now there's a big truth to this. Okay. So what I did is actually stop that side hustle. And because that particular Etsy shop was just going to be a print on demand, I didn't even look at it for months. It was when I logged back in in 2022 and noticed I had two sales that I didn't even know, but I realized it, it, it literally clicked why a digital Etsy shop or a product less business can actually be profitable. Only had two sales, but it was the power of the fact that I made money and I didn't even know I made money. I started a fourth shop. Planner therapy kind of came by accident as well. I was looking, I was genuinely y'all genuinely looking into this whole half letter planner and getting out of the happy planner classic size with, you know, the weird dimensions and really just genuinely wanting to not go through as much paper. A, if, if for, for those of you that don't know, that don't have a planner system, the whole planner world is, is like hardcore. I could sit and watch planner flip through videos all day long. It's equivalent to me of like going to look at houses. Like I could just walk into houses endlessly. And I love watching what other people do for productivity. I'm probably going to put out a couple productivity videos. It's not just about motivation or inspiration. It's actually about training yourself to be productive and to stay focused. That came from the moment I started reading Atomic, ha Atomic Habits by James Clear. I will put that link in the description down below. I've talked about it very briefly in another video and I do eventually want to do a full book review on that. But here's the thing y'all. You could watch all the productivity videos you want, but if you're not reading books that really go into detail and repeat those details and give you exercises to actually implement what you're reading, you're just not going to be productive. What I have done is the opposite. I decided to read a real book. Yes, you can buy it on Amazon right now. The hardback is actually cheaper than the paperback. And by the way, it looks beautiful on your shelves. People are going to be like, oh, you read Atomic Habits. This is like the number one entrepreneurial book, like one of the top selling ones in the world. It sold over 4 million copies. Once I read that book, I was intrigued. It was like the psychology of breaking bad habits, the psychology of creating new habits. And I find all of that interesting. And there's a couple of YouTube channels I do watch by people who do nothing but teach the productivity videos. And so eventually I want to share that with y'all, but starting a side hustle goes hand in hand with productivity because even more so when you had a full-time job to that, you add children to that and everything else that you need to do in your life to that. The only way you're going to actually get somewhere with a side hustle is to make sure that you basically get yourself into a productivity pattern. And when you do that pattern, it's going to keep you focused. And even more so when you reward yourself for cranking out that productivity, it's going to become fun for you. And that's what Atomic Habits is all about. You have to read it for yourself. Don't do an audiobook, Okay. I highly suggest people don't do an audiobook. You cannot underline and mark. And I have suggested this book to two of my other friends and they have already purchased it. In fact, one of my girlfriends said when the book came in, her husband took it, read it first within a week <laughs> before she started reading it. She understands, even though she still has a full-time job, she understands exactly what I have told her. She's got two kids. She's got a husband and she hands down believes why she needs to have a side hustle. And I mean a business, something for yourself, not going to drive Lyft and Uber or doing DoorDash. Okay. That is still trading time for many. If you have to go do that though, to maybe go get the money first to start the side hustle, then yes, that's a great idea. Um, or if you need to go do those jobs for now to pay off some debts so that you can just feel 
um, not stress starting a side hustle, by all means, go do that. But the definition of a side hustle these days is not doing, you know, the Lyft and the Uber and the DoorDash and the favor anymore. Okay. It was for quite some time, uh, a few years ago, but these days it is not really the definition of your side hustle. To me, in my opinion, the whole point of a side hustle is to build something over time that you truly own that is yours. My point of my side hustle or side hustles is to not just be extra money, but it's also to be the safety net that I need, which in this case of 2022, being laid off third time since the pandemic, I have this safety net, so to speak. Now, I am not making much money right now, but while I'm on unemployment and looking for a job again, I am working on these side hustles every day, all day, early in the morning, all afternoon, pick up my child. I still work on something in the evening. Sometimes it could be um, light that just doesn't take a lot of brain power. Sometimes it could be um, actually hopping on my computer uh, before I have to sit with my child for a little bit. So I am now working on everything full time. But if anything, having these side hustles that I started before not only keeps me out of depression, because let me tell you, I've already had to deal with the emotions of like, oh my God, I've been laid off the third time since the pandemic. And even though, yes, I have my, I have my negative moments where I take it just a little personally that I was the longest assistant at my company, yet they let me go. I was a single mom along with a couple of other people, but everyone mostly had husbands. They had another source of income. I was still let go. I'm a single mom. Obviously nobody cares, <laughs> which is exactly why there's no job security anymore. Okay. That's another fear, which really is connected with money. Job security equals money to do the things that we need to do. And if you don't have a job, you don't have the money and all you're going to do is be stressed. I do want to go more in depth about side hustles and a little bit more about particular setup strategies that I have, um, either learned, but also there are things that I do with my side hustles that just make sense. So if you are interested in hearing more about the specifics of forming a side hustle and really that whole process, please also comment down below because your input is so helpful to know how I can create other content to help you or to help other people looking for more of this type of information. I have already been seeing the fruits of my labor. I'm still waiting on unemployment, still waiting on SNAP benefits, still waiting on TANF, which is temporary assistance for needy families. And thank goodness I have a savings still that I've been able to pull from because I had to pay rent. But I truly believe that me losing my job was, again, preparation meeting opportunity. And this is the reason why we should all have side hustles. I'm not the only YouTuber talking about this. There are actual real YouTubers that are, you know, Amazon sellers. They're already successful. And they're, they have a lot of videos out there that are, that literally say why you need to start a side hustle, why it should be a requirement. Just like a full-time job is a requirement for a lot of us. Again, we're not always going to have a husband. We're not always going to have family to help us. We're not always even going to have the state helping us when we need that. Cause I'm still waiting on money. It's been almost a month and a half. And believe me, I've had a lot of sleepless, sleepless nights about this. Even just that feeling of like waiting on unemployment, you're, you're literally dependent on the state. You're dependent on someone else. With that being said, there are a lot of side hustles that you can start with barely any money. Okay. I would at least highly advise this. Unless you really know what you want to do and you really have a lot of money to buy a bunch of product, don't go into debt trying to start your side hustle. Okay. If anything, I'm going to tell you right now, my digital Etsy shop planner therapy that gets over 400 views a month, not a lot of sales, even though it's a digital printable shop, that is going to take me probably a little bit longer to grow. That is a true passive income. 
uh, source. It's a digital download, y'all. Nobody has to, I mean, unless they're going to message me for a question, pry a little bit more to get a review out of those people because it's, they're usually, you know, they're just click and download and that's it. Two years ago in 2020, I literally wanted to start a digital Etsy shop and I got discouraged. I got discouraged by the people that have hundreds and hundreds of listings. And my brain was like, how am I going to do hundreds and hundreds of listings? So at the time I abandoned that idea and here I am full circle. Now I'll just tell you this within the first week of opening up my digital Etsy shop in April, 2022, I had my first sale. So that right there led me to believe, oh, I have a chance with probably what are hundreds of thousands of planner insert listings on Etsy, somebody bought from my shop. So far I've had 10 sales. And let me tell you, I am more positive about those 10 sales than anything because the moment you are making money from something, you can now learn how to scale it, okay? Same thing with YouTube. I'm not making money from this YouTube channel. Not yet, I'm trying to become monetized, but like a lot of other YouTubers say, the moment you've made 25 cents from YouTube, it is so exciting because you're like, oh my gosh, I did that product, which is your YouTube uh, video, I created that product for free with just my time, just my iPhone. Like right now, I now film on my iPhone 12 Pro Max. Starting a YouTube channel is free. Starting a digital Etsy shop is free. And some might even say retail arbitrage is practically cheap, which means going and buying products somewhere and then flipping it. But I try to buy my supplies either locally where I know I can go to that store and get them over and over and over again. Or I order my stuff from Amazon where I know I can return stuff. If, which by the way, I've had to return stuff ordered by Amazon for arriving severely damaged. And I'm like, I can't even use this. This is supposed to be for my skincare brand. I can't give dented containers. So, Thank God Amazon protects their buyers more than they do their sellers. Because if a seller doesn't want to give you your money back, you can go to Amazon customer. I, I have the number for the Amazon customer service. They don't put it on the internet anymore, but I have it saved in my phone. I tell them, I call them and I'm like, look, all of these are, pro are damaged. I, I want my refund. So make a long story short, just get on YouTube. Obviously YouTube is going to be your best place for research right now. Figure out what you want to do. So for some of y'all, maybe you want to start a blog. For some of y'all, maybe you want to start a YouTube channel. Maybe you want to start a digital, um, you know, wedding shop. Maybe you want to start a digital planner shop. Maybe you, maybe you want to do print on demand. Print on demand is also another way to sell physical products without ever having to buy those physical products. You just have to understand it's also a volumes game with starting your side hustle for the most part, especially when you're on Etsy, it's all a volume game. So the more listings you can crank out, the more you're going to see views and the more you're eventually going to get sales. And of course, if you're constantly updating and learning more about selling on Etsy or selling even on Amazon, or even just how to um, optimize your listings better, make your photos better, your product better, all that work that you do eventually is gonna come back full circle. It, it's a combination of two things. It's do enough research to feel confident in taking action, but don't do too much research because what, what's gonna happen is you're gonna get, you're gonna do all this research, you're gonna find all this awesome information, and then one day you're gonna come across the one video that discourages you from even getting started. And one of my old coworkers months ago when I started planner therapy, she was in the middle of possibly reopening or she had it still, but reopening her Etsy shop and she didn't do it. She didn't do it. She didn't do it. And then, you know, a couple months in, I was like, girl, I've already gotten a couple sales. Like I just started taking action. I, I started, uh, even before reading atomic habits, I told myself I'm going to wake up even earlier now. I'm gonna wake up even earlier now. I'm gonna read in my book, write in my manifestation, Project 369 journal, which by the way, has also been another 
big driving factor when you are writing in a journal and you're telling yourself that you are doing this, you're doing that. It helps maintain your focus every day. And it's the first thing I do every day, y'all. I feed myself the inspiration and the motivation and I am my own cheerleader, okay? Because nobody else is gonna be your, your supporter. I will if you tell me in the description down below that you started your side hustle, especially from you know X, Y, Z happening in your life. Usually it's something negative that's kind of lit that fire under our asses to get started. It's like I love hearing about people's success stories. I get off on it. I have a folder on my YouTube playlist. Maybe I will put it public one day, but it's called Entrepreneurial Vibes. And it is, I have been building up a playlist of all these entrepreneurs, some that are only making, you know, six figures, some that are making millions of dollars. And I made that playlist because I told myself, if I ever get discouraged, you can watch that playlist. It's an instant motivational booster. Yeah, I keep myself motivated as much as possible. And I just keep learning more productivity techniques that I'm, same thing, I'm trying them out. I'm seeing what works for me and seeing what sticks naturally uh, based on my schedule and just the kind of person I am. Obviously, I get bored too easily. That's another reason why I have multiple side hustles. It's not just waiting around you know, with one product, I got to wait around for more supplies. I want something else to work on, but I truly go nuts working on the same thing. And most women are truly multitaskers. Okay. So we already have that functioning part of our brains. Now you can't always multitask, which is the obvious. There are times you are going to have to focus on literally one thing, one task at a time, but overall, I like switching up my days. I love when I'm like, I'm going to spend, I spent all day yesterday actually doing planner therapy. Today it's filming this YouTube video and doing the full process, the editing and everything up until this video releases at 4.45 PM in the United States, or at least in central US where I'm located in Texas. And because I'm also trying to force myself to be able to do more than one video a week and not I want to put time into things like there will be videos where hands down, I will have to plan a couple of the points that I'm going to say, but for the most part, I really just want YouTube to be where I'm so natural at talking in front of the camera now that I just want to be able to hop on and do a quick video and then not have very many edits. And so, uh, even with YouTube y'all, I had to take myself out of that limiting belief thinking, Oh, people are not going to like my crazy curly hair and the days that I'm just wearing no makeup without my eyebrows done. And, Oh, I need to, um, you know, I need to have on this really nice outfit. Once I kind of got out of that limiting belief, I guess you could say that was holding me back from actually creating content and just said, screw it. Right. I am still me, whether I am all dolled up with my hair straight and f even more makeup on, or whether I'm in, in a t-shirt from Goodwill, <laughs> I'm still the same person and I'm still here. And so I still want to talk to you guys. I still want to help others as well. If anything, you know, I may not be able to teach you everything, but I would love to be able to be a motive, a place that you can go for motivation and inspiration when you just need to hear someone tell you, just do it, just get started. You're going to see good stuff happening when you actually take action. Okay. It's just like in the world of manifestation, which I'm very big into manifestation, by the way, that make for a whole nother video about the things that I have actually manifested like crazy things. Like the, the day I woke up and said, I want to find a pair of Adidas sneakers at either Marshall's or TJ Maxx or a discount store because I didn't want to pay full price. And I found it. Yeah. The moment my brain was like super focused on finding a pair of Adidas, a specific, a pair of Adidas. And I didn't want to pay a hundred dollars for them. I found them like crazy, crazy stories that I have manifested. So I'm the kind of person that says, if there's a will, there's a way. In order to manifest the things that you want, 
you have to do the work. You have to take action. And that's just going to be the hard truth. Okay. Obviously, I mean, I could talk about manifestation all day long in many other videos, but manifestation is nothing more than really having faith in yourself, having trust in the process and taking action, sometimes massive action to at least get the ball rolling, but also to take action and take a consistent action towards basically building building into the life that you want, okay? I am ready to digress from this topic today. Thank you for watching. Take care. I just wanna lay down and sleep on my bed. But you stuck in my head. I don't know why. Wish that you were.